Hello paddlers! I am super excited to be adding a new state to my roster. I'm in Menominee, Michigan on Green Bay, right across the Menominee River from Marinette, Wisconsin. Now living in the southern half of Wisconsin, when I think of Michigan's Upper Peninsula, I think, God, that's gotta be a five or six hour drive. And some parts of it are, and definitely worth the drive to see. But Menominee, Michigan is only a three hour drive from downtown Madison, a two and a half hour drive from downtown Milwaukee. Now my hotel is right on the bay. I could launch my boat right here if I wanted to. I'm gonna choose to launch on the Menominee River instead. Obviously the bay is nice and calm right now, but the outside chance we get a strong easterly wind while I'm out. I don't wanna have to go all the way around that lighthouse, all the way around the break wall um, and face some adverse conditions on the way back. I do hope to paddle on Green Bay, but I'm gonna approach it from the Menominee River just to stay safe um, in case the conditions change while I'm out there. So let's stop chatting about it. Let's go launch the boat. Okay, I found my launch and I think this is gonna be the sweet spot where nature to the west meets the more urban part of the river to the east. I'm at Stevenson Island Park, one of the many islands on the Menominee River in this area. I'm on the Wisconsin side of the Menominee River. Stevenson Island Park is absolutely lovely, green space. Um, we've got a farmer's market going on over there, lots of picnic area and play place for the kids. You've got sculpture, you've got a statue of an old guy, you've got a museum, which I'm sure is all super interesting, but I don't have time for that today. Oh, let's get on the water. terribly far up the Menominee River from my launch point because there is a dam just outside of town. Oh, in fact, I, can, I think I can see the dam from here. Uh, anyway, so we're not going to spend too much time on this part of the river and we're going to turn around and go see the fun stuff. Holy fuck! I mean, holy beach, sorry. Just remember these videos are not for children. So it was actually like a little closer than I thought. I probably only went a quarter of a mile and there is the dam. I can't go past this bridge per city ordinance, but I don't think I'd need to. I mean, a dam is a dam is a dam. And perhaps I could have done a little research on this dam, but I didn't. So I could just make some stuff up. I'm guessing it was originally to power the lumber mills that the area was founded on. Yep, we're gonna go with that. Backside of Stevenson Island Park, there is statue of said old guy I spoke of earlier. Still don't know who he is or what he did, but I'm sure he is of extreme historical importance to the area. Wow, this water is so clear in the Menominee River. So while we're on the quiet backwaters of the Menominee River, let's talk about Marinette, Wisconsin for just a quick minute. If you do an internet search, you will learn that Marinette, Wisconsin was named after Marinette Chevalier, who was the daughter of a Menominee Indian chief and a French fur trader. And you'll probably close your browser and say, oh, isn't that nice? Well, I did a little more reading while I was in the drive-thru waiting for my order this morning. Marinette was more than just a fur trader. Yes, she was married to a fur trader um, who was very successful in the area. So that dude bolted. She had a common law husband, Farnsworth. 
uh, who also was a fur trader and a school teacher, I want to say. Maybe it was the first husband that was a school teacher. So Farnsworth successfully opposes the Astor's American Fur Trading Company 100% due to her kinship with the Menominee people, her business savvy, and her skills as a fur trader herself. So Marinette not only continued the business without Farnsworth very successfully, but she also acted as an advisor for the Menominee people on dealings with white people, uh, policy, lumber companies, and the U.S. government. Not only that, but she was also very well known for her charity work, uh, dealing with the impoverished and the sick in the area. Locals started dubbing her as Queen Marinette, um, so kind of sounds like she was royalty in this area. Holy balls, will you look at the size of that? Doggy, speaking of other big fellas, look what we got going on here. That's a big one. What the hell is that thing coming out of its mouth? Might be a swim bladder. I've seen them outside of fish in the past. Yikes, I'm getting way too close. It smells so bad. That guy is more than six feet long. I don't think I have ever sat in one spot that was such a sharp contrast between nature and industry. I just saw a green heron right over there and look at that magnificent vessel to my right. I told you we'd go from nature to industry in a hot minute here on the Menominee River. That's Fincantieri Marinette Marine. Now I thought I saw shipyards in Manitowoc. What those folks were doing in Manitowoc are like cool toys compared to what they do here in Marinette. Fincantieri is the largest shipbuilding company in the world with nearly 20,000 employees globally. They have 18 shipyards on four continents and four of those shipyards are right here in Wisconsin. Fincantieri makes ships for the Navy, for the Coast Guard. They make vessels that transport liquefied natural gas. They have a contract with the Navy to build the Constellation class frigates. They build ships for law enforcement. They build articulated tugboats. They build dredges, ferries, barges, and research vessels. And don't forget, they do repair and maintenance for your vessel as well. But very cool. I'm catching the drawbridge open. Wonder who's coming or going. This is the Meredith Ashton. And her job apparently is hauling rocks. For what reason? I don't know. I think you have to almost be right next to some of these ships to appreciate the enormity of them. This vessel behind me has got to be, I don't know, maybe. Feet wide. We definitely don't ever escape the hum of industry on this part of the Menominee River that's a foundry over there on the Wisconsin side. And here we are entering Green Bay. I really have to say I'm pleasantly surprised that there was just a lot less boat traffic on the Menominee River than I had expected. And I'm pretty excited about what we're gonna see next. I 
feared the wind and the waves were going to be a little bit worse on the other side of the break wall, but actually the wind must be coming from the south a little bit because it is so pleasant over here. The Menominee North Pier Lighthouse has been in existence since 1877. It's been in its current spot since 1886 after two previous moves to lengthen the pier and reinforce it with concrete. In 1917, it was painted red to meet the federal regulations of a red lighted lighthouse to also be painted red. The U.S. Coast Guard operated the North Pier Lighthouse until 1972 when it went automated and the city of Menominee took possession of it in 2008. 2016, the North Pier Lighthouse underwent a $350,000 renovation by a private donor. I took a walk out to the lighthouse when I rolled into town last night around sunset and there were a bunch of young adults, late teens, hanging out on the lighthouse walk. They had a ramp on that walk and they were riding their bicycle, flipping their bicycle up into the air and plopping into Green Bay. They told me the water is about 20 feet deep there on the side of the lighthouse um, and they had pool noodles attached to their bicycle so it would float and they can easily retrieve it. They were sure having a good time. This beach I'm approaching here is a very interesting unofficial name. Looks like a great spot to get out, stretch my legs, hydrate, reapply some sunscreen. internet search for Fat Ladies Beach in Michigan, it's going to take you here. If you ask Siri for directions to Fat Ladies Beach, it's going to take you here. There's no official signage that says Fat Ladies Beach, but that's what I'll welcome call it. Veterans Memorial Park, and it's only about a half of a mile, maybe not even that, north on the bay from the beach we were just at. It just as pretty of a beach, but there's hardly anybody here. lighthouse somehow got really far away. Here's a fun fact for our way back. The word Menominee is, I believe, an Ojibwe word for wild rice people. This 
the side of the island as the no wake zone, which is kind of pleasant, but overall I'm really pretty happy with, you know, it's such an industrial area. I guess I thought there was going to be a little bit more commercial boat traffic, but even on the busier uh, channel over there, uh, I can't complain. This has been awesome. Again, what a contrast. We've got a quiet little marsh on the south side of this island. And you've got whatever industry that is right behind me. Learning about Marinette and Menominee was really kind of a happy accident. My original plan for this weekend was to return to Sturgeon Bay and paddle in Door County a little bit, but there was a classic and wood boat show this weekend. I couldn't find a hotel anywhere in town. The next closest suggestion by Priceline was in Menominee, which technically is only 22 miles away if you cross Green Bay, um, but it's actually a two hour drive because you have to go all the way south to Green Bay and then come back up to UP. So an incredibly happy accident. This paddle really exceeded my expectations and I loved learning a little bit about this area. Thanks for coming with me and if you haven't yet, please subscribe so you don't miss any of my next adventures. I'll see you.